Recently, my husband and I have been playing a lot of Animal Crossing as we restarted our island, but we also did this while I was in the middle of several advertising finals. And while I had advertising and Animal Crossing on the brain, I decided to pull up some old Animal Crossing advertisements to see what I could find. And lo and behold, I found a whole collection over an hour's worth from this channel, Vinny64. And as I needed a break from final papers, I began watching some. And after watching and observing, I thought, I really like this, but I wonder if other people would be interested. So to garner that interest, I posted a reel regarding Animal Crossing advertising, and it did well. Really well, actually. So I said, I'm gonna make a video about this. But before we get into Animal Crossing, we also need to talk a little bit about advertising. Advertising is, at its core, manipulation. Advertisers tell you about a product you want or need in your life in hopes that they will change your opinion on it. Advertising is absolutely everywhere in today's digital world, and you may be wondering why anyone even listens to advertisements anymore, since so many people are aware of how awful they are. The answer lies in one word, appeals. Advertisers use appeal to grab you. Their job is to appeal to you as an audience member. Fear appeals say, oh, you're scared of this thing? Our product will ease that fear. Or emotional appeals say, oh, you want love, you want happiness? Well, this product can give it to you. Obviously, there are way more in this in mainstream advertising, but the main one used in video games is a show-don't-tell kind of approach. This makes most video game advertisements inoffensive, and if you're an enjoyer of video games, you know that video game advertising is a part of everyday life, though not in our face as much as normal advertisements. However, there's one video game giant that nearly conquers the entire market, Nintendo. Nintendo is the producer of Animal Crossing and has been producing the game for over 20 years. Its humble beginnings began in 2001 with Donbutsu no Mori, but we'll get more into that later. The game is your standard life simulator. Sell bugs, catch fish, slave away several hours of your everyday life attempting to appease your greedy landlord, you know, the usual stuff. It has become one of the world's most popular games of its kind, if not the most popular, and one reason it got there was because of its advertising. So without further ado, let's dive into the history of Animal Crossing advertising. Donbutsu no Mori was the first game in the series, although fans will also know this as Animal Crossing. To my understanding, these games are exactly the same, but Animal Crossing is a bigger game. The American advertising for this game is some of the best I've ever seen. It's funny, it teaches you how to play the game, and it translates graphics to the real life incredibly well by putting actors in big foam suits. These suits resembled the characters that were shown in-game throughout the ad. It differentiates from its competitors by doing this, by allowing the game to translate to real life. It's not uncommon to see a mascot suit in an ad of any kind, but Animal Crossing added a ton of humor by making the commercial like a short episode of a sitcom. Just watch, they do it really well. Nice outfit. Where'd you get it, a garbage dump? Uh, yeah. Why am I always the one organizing the treasure hunts? Maybe I'd like to sit around blasting techno music all day. Trade you some wallpaper for your UFO. You think I'm a chump? Try the raccoon. There was also the same tagline that played at the end of every commercial. Welcome to Animal Crossing, the live game that's happening every minute of every day, whether you're playing or not. This is a great example of awesome advertising because not only does it inform the audience on what the game is, but it also entertains the audience. Another theme that we see in this advertising is this overarching theme of community, familial love, connecting with friends. It's been ever-present in the advertising since 2001, and we still have it in a lot of Animal Crossing advertising. The game is a life simulator, and in real life you have people you're close to, so the game encourages you to play with them. It also provides an emotional appeal of, hey, this product is going to get your family together, and you guys are all going to play this super cute game. I'll talk more on this later, because it's present in at least one advertising campaign per game. We also need to discuss Animal Crossing's print advertising. While a lot of print advertising for the game was standard like this, they also did something a little different. To my understanding, these are posters that were put into magazines that you could rip out. I think it's very cute that it looks like a newspaper, although we don't read the newspaper much anymore, it was very prevalent during the early 2000s and late 90s. Along with this, the posters were actually pretty funny and would include things like Tom Nook's special delivery, which would get you rare in-game items. Maybe you noticed it, but in these early advertisements, they really pushed to have you feel like you were living in the town. 
Print advertisements were like the town paper or town announcements. They also do and will continue in the future to push this kind of idea of the real time schedule. They want you to know that you can play this game on your schedule no matter the time the game is always active. The game did well and sold 2.27 million copies, so naturally Animal Crossing kept this same advertising when they moved into advertising for Animal Crossing Wild World five years later in 2006. These advertisements differ slightly. Since the game was on the DS now, obviously you could take it wherever as opposed to the GameCube. They also kind of utilize this new theme of comfort and coziness. Yes, absolutely you could play with friends via online multiplayer, or you could sit around and play with your family, but you could also play by yourself and not feel alone. Basically, every territory did this, except for America, who ramped up just the absolute absurdity of their ad. Now, do I think it was funny and eye-catching and also a good ad? Of course I do. The ad featured three boys skateboarding to, I guess, a family's house, and around them are these anthropomorphic animals. At first, I was kind of caught off guard, but then I realized that's basically what the game is, but in a much less disturbing way. Outside of America, a lot of the ads were pretty much the same. A lot were just the same clips chopped up and maybe dubbed over depending on the territory you were in. It wasn't anything too crazy. A few advertisements specifically CGI'd Peanut in the background, which I think is kind of cute, but it's only ever her in these advertisements, which I don't really understand. As much as I like these advertisements, I have two big gripes with them. The first one is that every single ad, for the most part, shows the game squished on a DS screen and in pretty low resolution. I understand that the reason they do this is to show the difference between the top and the bottom screen, and the reason I know that is because they show the same exact sliding shot in most of the advertisements. I don't necessarily mind this shot, I think it's informational, but what I do hate is that it's shown with a DS in the background. I just think, personally, from an advertising standpoint, it adds way too much external stimuli for people to focus on rather than the game. I understand that at this time they were also kind of trying to pitch and sell the DS, but also there were separate advertisements for the Nintendo DS at the time. Pushing this gripe aside, my other big gripe is that they play the same, exact, not at all changed clip of music in every single ad, no matter the territory. I'm not joking. Listen. Blauer Himmel erinnert mich immer an Animal Crossing, an meine eigene. Kose, Burul, Chuachio. I followed the police guide. The only country that didn't do this was America, who put in this soundtrack, which is arguably worse. I understand that it is the game's opening theme. Whenever you open the game, that is the music you will hear. But Animal Crossing has such an amazing, diverse soundtrack. Wouldn't you also want to highlight some of those? You guys can't really hear these videos unless you go and watch them for yourself. I got sick of hearing this song after like the second or third advertisement. I can't even imagine living in a territory at the time, and that was the only song they ever used in the advertisement. I think people would get annoyed with it very quickly. Besides that, though, I really think the repetition in the ads benefit them. It's a life simulator. What you can do is extremely limited, and I think the clips that they chose to use showcase the variety of things you can do. Personally, I don't tend to like if an ad is the same, just reformatted to fit different regions, but I think it fits well here because I think Animal Crossing has the same effect on most people. It's comforting, calming, happy. Had this been a video game like Mario or Sonic, maybe I would have expected something more. But I think in these advertisements, the cute, calm, cozy nature of it all really does benefit them. It showed structure, it showed routine in a chaotic world, this structure and routine and fun that you could take anywhere. 
who doesn't wonder about being in another world when life gets rough? Animal Crossing fulfilled that fantasy. And just like their past game, it was a success, selling 11.75 million units. And obviously, they carried this advertising into Animal Crossing City Folk. I believe this title is actually called Animal Crossing Let's Go to the City in basically every other territory except America, where it's called City Folk. This game had a few key advertising points that they hit on. The first one was this kind of blurring of lines between the real and virtual world that we've seen in the past few advertisements. A girl watches a bus pull away, just like her villager does in Animal Crossing. She sips on a cup of coffee while her Animal Crossing villager does the same. She looks up to the night sky to see constellations just like her Animal Crossing villager did. This ad was also redubbed and played in multiple other territories. But another thing they did was they really capitalized on the connection aspect of Animal Crossing. They specifically did this by also advertising the Wii Speak, since this game was exclusive to the Wii. Now it wasn't simply just texting your friends in-game, you could speak to them in real time, adding that sense of connection to the game. This theme transcended advertising for this game in every single territory. This kind of advertising works incredibly well with Animal Crossing. Animal Crossing is all about social connections, day-to-day -day life. So obviously, things like platonic and familial love or social connection are going to be the forefront of most advertisements. I think it's important to bring this up now, and you may or may not have noticed it. Animal Crossing is a game for everyone. Anyone can play it. But you may have noticed in the advertisements, specifically, teenage girls are at the front and center. In fact, from this point on, pay attention to it, because the only time you'll see boys at the center of advertisements for Animal Crossing is in America. There are a few reasons why I think this was done purposefully, but I'm not gonna get into those right now. Outside of social connection and love, they also leaned heavily into the fact that you could transfer your game from the Wii to your DS. This isn't present in necessarily every advertisement, but it is present in at least one advertisement per campaign. Another thing you may notice right about now is that a lot of these advertisements, despite whatever platform they're on, look pretty much the same. Same exact clips, same mechanics besides a few tweaks here and there. Animal Crossing doesn't tend to push this like new and shiny look like a lot of other video games do. It doesn't oversell itself and I think that's really good. I also think that by doing this, they're just being very transparent with their audience of, hey, this is what the game can do and this is what you're gonna get. My only big gripe is that they did the same thing as they did in Wild World where they repeated the same music every ad, but I won't subject you to that again. With the Wii being as successful as it was, Animal Crossing was also a success and sold 4.32 million copies before moving into its next game, Animal Crossing New Leaf for the 3DS. This game had a ton of advertising, and for good reason, they flipped the script on this game. Now, you were no longer just a member of the community, you were actually the mayor of the town. The first big visual thing that they do in these advertisements is that same kind of meshing of worlds, of what is the video game world and what is the real world. A lot of advertisements for this game combined actors from the real world in this CGI video game world. We also see this in an ad with Kyari Pamu Pamu from Japan. Even though I don't think she was maybe the best choice of person to have, let's just focus on the ad right now. This ad is very whimsical, and I think it falls in line with the other Animal Crossing advertisements pretty well. In this era, they went definitely more for a whimsical approach of putting somebody in the actual video game rather than mimicking it in the real world. Although there were a lot of advertisements during this time for Animal Crossing New Leaf, they tend to follow three kind of themes. This first one is, like I said, a whimsical escape from reality kind of theme. By meshing the real world with the video game world, it creates a sense of familiarity and yet kind of this idea of having a new experience. There's an idea of escapism involved in it. This wasn't present in a ton of ads, but it was present in enough that I wanted to bring it up. Now, if you played the game, it's no shock that a lot of ads at this time focused on being able to customize your town and the flexibility and personalization that came with it. They also had a tagline specifically in the English advertisements that was kind of like this, I can live life however I please. Listen to this. You can design your world just how you like it. 
with new opportunities to build and shape your town any way you want it. In Animal Crossing New Leaf on Nintendo 3DS, I can live life however I please. In Animal Crossing New Leaf on Nintendo 3DS, I can live life however I please. In Animal Crossing on Nintendo 3DS, you can live life however you want. There is a world where I get to do things my way. I'm gonna stop here because I think you get the idea. There was this newfound freedom in Animal Crossing New Leaf. It wasn't just being able to customize your house or where the trees went. It was you were able to literally create your own paths. You were able to decorate your town and decide what went where. You were in charge of this reality even if you weren't in charge of your own reality. When Animal Crossing did this, they subtly advertised escapism. They basically said, oh hey, you know, you're a kid or you can't do what you want with your life right now, but you can do whatever you want here, so you should buy our game. On top of this, at least in English advertisements, they utilized a tagline that said, every day is a new day. They most likely did this to allude to Animal Crossing New Leaf. Every day is a new day means literally turning over a new leaf every day. This kind of alludes to, even if nothing exciting is happening in your real life, there's always something going on in Animal Crossing. Every day is a new day. There's so many new adventures you can go into every day in Animal Crossing. Moving out of this, we also have some advertisements for other territories that focused on a single specific aspect of the game. Now, at first I was a little confused because all these ads are in languages I do not speak. But then I realized these advertisements were actually teaching potential consumers how to play the game to cause less frustrations. If you think back to those print advertisements that we talked about earlier, the ones that looked like newspapers, this is basically that in video format. There was one that focused on fashion that I just showed. France also produced two commercials, one directed towards men and one directed towards women that specifically highlighted the photography feature. I'm not sure why they highlighted this specific feature, my guess is just because it was kind of new. Although I don't think these advertisements were drawing people in by the masses by any means. Germany did this too, but I think they did it a little bit better. Instead of highlighting features, they highlighted characters like Tom Nook and K.K. Slider and how you could interact with them. The ad showed the character's purpose within the game and how interacting with them would make your life easier. These ads walked you through the home buying process with Tom Nook and walked you through the club and music process with KK. There's nothing incredibly special about these ads, I just thought they were a little different and thought I would bring them up out of interest. Even though Animal Crossing New Leaf did have a lot of ads, a lot of them were the exact same, just with different clips chopped up and redubbed depending on the territory. Like I said earlier, I enjoy this. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it, and I think it benefits Animal Crossing. It's just, in the long run, it's less for me to talk about in this video. The advertising was incredibly successful, and the game sold over just 13 million copies. To add to sales, they decided to pitch a new DLC called Animal Crossing Happy Home Designer. They followed a lot of the same advertising strategies here as they did in Animal Crossing New Leaf, really emphasizing freedom and customizability. Obviously, with this DLC, you get so much more customizability, being able to not only influence how the villagers' houses look, but also how the outside of their houses look. This is something you've never been able to do before in the Animal Crossing world, so naturally they really tried to upsell it by using key phrases. These phrases were things like, like never before seen, or customized to your heart's content, or thousands of items. Basically things that made the game sound shiny and new, adding replayability to it. Much like we've seen in past advertisements where Animal Crossing tried to sell a console along with it, they did the same thing here but with amiibo cards. They specifically did this by tying back in this social connection aspect. There was an American ad that featured a brother and sister sharing amiibo cards. And in this Japanese ad, we see a group of four girls gathered around, swapping amiibo cards and showing off their houses. Think of it like Pokemon cards. They were cards you could collect and swap, but they had in-game benefits in that you could get characters. Amiibo cards have been advertised in past Animal Crossing advertising campaigns, but it was really pushed here. Outside of this, most advertisements were the same across territories. And once again, advertising did well. They sold just over 3.5 million copies of the DLC. 
After this, Animal Crossing wouldn't produce a full game again until Animal Crossing New Horizons. I'm going to skip over Amiibo Festival and Pocket Camp because they did not have much advertising, and the advertising they did have kind of falls in line with what we've already talked about. But when the world seemed at its most bleak, we got Animal Crossing New Horizons. Its release came on March 20th, 2020, which if that date holds no significance to you, it should. It's the day the entire world went on lockdown amidst the COVID-19 pandemic. The reason I even bring this up is because the game was widely successful, selling over 40 million copies. And while yes, the advertising was absolutely phenomenal, obviously some of the success came from everybody being locked inside and Animal Crossing was a new way to experience life without going outside. Now with advertising, this game didn't do so much commercials as they did just launch trailers. However, the trailers and commercials they did release showed a wide variety of things you could do in game. They advertise not only the customization of houses or the outdoors, they go beyond that. You can customize the land itself, even the villagers you get in the town. Much like New Leaf, they flipped the script in this game. You are no longer in a town. This game advertised the prospect of an entire deserted island all to yourself to customize. Much like in past advertisements, another thing they do here is they blur the lines between real life and the game. They push it more than they did in New Leaf, but not as much as they did in past games. The territory we see it most in in this game-specific advertising is America and the United Kingdom. Sometimes it's more subtle, sometimes it's a little more in your face. They also pushed that social connection aspect again, although that was very intentional considering what was happening at this time. Animal Crossing sales were boosted because of the pandemic, and one reason is because it was multiplayer friendly and could give the player this sense of social connection without going out of the house. In fact, a few advertisements actually showed people communicating via Zoom, which I thought was really interesting. And obviously, like in past advertisements, we had this aspect of social connection being shown through, you know, parents and children playing or friends or siblings playing together. Whether you want to admit it or not, it's genuinely no coincidence that they pushed commercials that had social connection in it so heavily. But Animal Crossing didn't simply rely on the pandemic alone, they also relied on the game as a form of communication outside of the pandemic. For instance, if two characters in a commercial were moving far away from each other, Animal Crossing was advertised to be the main source of connection. In this ad, a girl and her family are moving far away, and she cries as she bids her friends farewell. However, they gift her Animal Crossing so that they can all stay connected. Now, even though phones exist, and we all know this, Animal Crossing advertises itself as not only a connection platform, but a freedom of artistic expression. The girl in this advertisement is able to connect with her friends via the game and doesn't feel so lonely by the end of the ad. It's cute, and in a time where we were all terrified we were never going to be able to go outside again, it really encouraged people to buy it to connect with others. Animal Crossing provided a life simulator, which is just what we needed at a time when nobody had a life. This kind of social connection advertising was really present in America and the United Kingdom, but when we move into Japan, it's actually focused more on development of the island itself. Obviously, there is still a social connection aspect of it. It would be stupid to not include that in the ad. But Japan specifically makes the outdoors and inside look really pretty, very detailed oriented. And many of the characters in game are framed against this beautiful aesthetic background that has been fully developed. I think it plays into this sense of accomplishment, of look at how beautiful my island is. To me, the Japanese ads actually showcased gameplay more than any other country. While other countries definitely utilized cutscenes, Animal Crossing advertisements in Japan actually showed a lot of gameplay. Japan also specifically had ads targeted to different times of year. In this ad, we see the fall, there were a few targeted for the spring and summer, and they even have a Halloween-specific ad. Even going further, they have one where all the NPCs are gathered around a table having an afternoon tea and reflecting back on the history of the island. This again plays into this idea of accomplishment and development, right? It's showing where the island came from and how it progressed into what it is today. And the NPCs 
abilities reflect back on your character, establishing a relationship with them. Between these advertisements and the pandemic, it's no wonder the game became so successful. It came at a time when the world needed it most and had so much replayability and customization that allowed people to be entertained for hours, even if they were stuck at home. I feel like there is so much more I can talk about, but at the same time, I think this video is getting long enough. I hope you learned something about the history of Animal Crossing advertisements, but above all, I hope you enjoyed it. I enjoyed scripting and making this video so much, I actually have two or three videos just like this planned for different video game series. I have a Sonic the Hedgehog and Mario one in the works that you can expect to come in the next few months. Unfortunately, videos like these do take a long time to script, so until then, I will be scripting those videos and filling my free time playing Animal Crossing New Horizons. Maybe you all will join me, but I guess I'll figure it out when I see you all next time. Thank you for watching.